Hi everybody, this is Paul here, and today we're going to do our very first lecture, and that is all about what is data analytics. So let's get started. Data analytics is the analysis of large databases to find novel, commercially valuable, and exploitable patterns. So we're, all, we're interested in looking at big data sets. We want to find patterns. We want to find new patterns, because if you're doing work for industry, there's not much, you're not going to get paid if you find patterns that people already know are in the data. We want to find patterns that are commercially valuable. So we want to make we want to better make decisions based on the patterns. We want, to, we, we want them to be worth money to the company. For the research work that I do with the, with the hospital, we want to find patterns that we can then use to help make kids uh, help treat kids better, treat kids that have cancer. So they're not they're, they're also commercially valuable, but it's a slightly different. Um, intention. And finally we want to find patterns that are exploitable. So we want to find patterns that we can use to um, make decisions. Some some methods, and we'll see some of these a little bit later in the semester, things like association rule mining allows you to find lots and lots of patterns but it's hard to know which ones of those are important and which ones are not. So you need to find patterns that you can make decisions from. So our aim is to discover meaningful insights and um, knowledge from the data. And the way that we describe our discoveries is using something, using a word called a model. The model is a really um, fluffy kind of word, uh, and we're going to use it in a couple of different senses. But you can imagine it's like, it could be rules, so if someone earns more than $30,000, then they should pay this amount of tax. Or they could be uh, mathematical functions like um, linear models or just mathematical functions. Or they could be um, things called decision trees, which we'll look at in a few weeks. So this idea of data mining or data analytics is all about looking through these data sets and trying to build models. And generally it's done automatically. We don't want to do this individually and find the patterns ourselves. We want to use the computer to automatically build those models. So when we talk about models, we the sort of they can be used in a couple of senses. First off, the model has to capture some essence of the discovered knowledge. Um, second of all, we can use the model to help us to understand the world. And third, sometimes we can use the model to make predictions for the future from the data we've already collected. And this idea, the first idea of being able to use the model to understand the world versus using the, the model to make a prediction for the future, really fit into the, the two main types of data analytics, data mining that we're going to see. The first part is making sense of the, the first type is making sense of the world. Um, and that's called, we'll see this a little bit later, but that's called unsupervised learning. That's all about just looking at the data, trying to understand how it's structured. The second kind, making predictions, is usually called supervised machine learning. And there we're trying to make um, predictions from some previous data that we've had. And we'll see an example of that a little bit later. So who's using data analytics? Well, it's really a case of who isn't using data analytics. So it's really been applied by business, by government, uh, quite widely in the financial services industry. We're using it in biologists, so biology, it's often called bioinformatics in that case. Uh, it's used in medicine, so some of the research work that I do is trying to help um, clinicians to better understand um, childhood cancers, that's a medical problem. Uh, it's used um, to determine risk, it's used in the intelligence areas, it's used in science, it's used in engineering. It's really used by a lot of people. and. All of these methods rely on data. So data needs to be collected about different kinds of things. And that can be businesses or customers. It could be human resources. It could be data about a company's products or about how they manufacture those products. Or it could be about their suppliers or their business partners or their competitors. And universally, we're trying to... The reason we want to do this data analytics is to better support decision-making. So we want to make evidence-based decisions so we want to help people to make decisions to um, to make the right decision, and we want we want them to do that using data. So it's really to um, inform decision making. 
Um, we can sort of cut, break that down in a little bit um, more detail. We can sometimes use it to find fraudulent behavior. So we're trying to find, it's almost like a needle in the haystack. We're trying to find the few cases that are quite different to other cases. We might be trying to understand scientific processes or particularly in business, we might be trying to identify opportunities that the business can take advantage of. Let's look a little bit now about some motivation for data analytics. People have been collecting data and checking it and organizing it for many, many years. So five and a half thousand years ago, the Sumerians were marking tax records onto dried mud tablets. And you can see in the picture on the right there, um, a picture, this is a set of tablets from the Sumerians. It's not tax records, but it's, a, I believe it's a bill of sale of, of a house or some property. So a bit after that, scientists developed these amazing things called microscopes and telescopes. And when they looked through these instruments, they could see a new world. They could see a new world of microbes, or they could see a whole lot of stars and planets and um, interstellar bodies that they couldn't see before. And they drew pictures of those and tried to understand what was happening. Uh, well after that, we had market researchers. So they were running surveys, or they had TV diaries. So one of the very first companies that I worked for used to do the, um, the TV ratings in Australia. And, the, and when I first worked in that company back in the mid-80s, they had uh, these TV diaries. So they would, they would send these diaries out to companies, uh, to sorry, families, and the, they would mark up what they were watching every 15 minutes, or every five minutes maybe. And they were sent back to the company, and the market research company would use that data to work out how to sell advertising spots. And we also had medical laboratories that, that were taking dozens of measurements per patient and then using that to help to understand what was happening with the patient. But that, this data, is the old days. Well, five and a half thousand years, years ago is definitely the old days, but even the medical, the market researchers and the medical laboratories, it's all old days. The problem now is that um, we've got something called a data explosion. So most of the data that people collect now goes straight into computers with, without people even seeing them. So for example, uh, rather than submitting your tax records on, on uh, mud tablets, you're submitting them electronically and they go straight into these big data warehouses. Telescopes um, are essentially auto autonomous robots. They operate remotely and they, they make these digital images that just go into computer files. When you go to the supermarket, your, when you buy products, um, the point of sale data goes straight into data warehouses, and um, this is even this is quite old days now. But you can see on the right hand side there that picture with all the little spots. That's a visualization from some high throughput technology. So they have this thing. They used to have this thing called microarray technology. It's a bit old these days, and that could simultaneously measure the level of activity of thousands of genes per patient. And you can see each of those spots relates to a different gene and the color of the spot, whether it's more green or more red or more yellow, um, says whether that spot was being um, more expressed, that, whether that gene was being more expressed in the ca cancer sample compared to normal or the other way around. If it's yellow, then it's similar. And even that one's quite a small one. Uh, and you can see with that picture, you can't really understand what's happening there. There's a whole lot of little spots. There's not really any patterns there. Um, and with the other data sets that are even larger, that, that's even more of a problem. So we have this problem. There's this huge deluge of data, and it's totally useless to people unless we can equip them with methods and techniques to be able to understand, make sense of the data, and then to make predictions, the two types of data analytics we're talking about. So that leads on to something called big data. And this is really huge, um, of, of huge global interest at the moment. Even this is a little bit old, this slide now, but um, back in 2011, the Obama administration announced $200 million for R&D into big data in the US. And they, re they released this, um, or the Tech America Foundation released this really nice report called Demystifying Big Data which um, I'd really urge you to go and have a look at if you're interested in this area. And in that report, they talked about how to harness the transformational power of big data. And they had a whole lot of recommendations for how they would train and um, 
train the huge numbers of data scientists and analysts that were ne needed. And one thing that was really nice in that report was this statistic. And it was trying to quantify this idea of the data explosion. So they said that back in 2011, 1.8 zettabytes of information was created globally, and they expected that to double every year. Now, 1.8 zettabytes is not a number that I can comprehend in my head. So what I really like about it is they, they, they say what that is sort of equivalent to. And they said it's the same as uh, 200 billion two-hour high-definition movies that one person could watch, and that would take them 47 million years to watch them one after the other. And even those numbers, like 200 billion in 47 million years, is, is, are still numbers that really it's hard to um, get straight in your head. But you can see that it's a huge amount of information. And this data is coming from sensors, from satellites, from social media. There's a lot of pictures of, um, of cats and kittens and, and puppy dogs cavorting. There's data from mobile communications. Uh, there's data from Twitter. There's data from email. There's data from RFID tags. And there's a lot of data for enterprise applications. Now this is a little bit old, so I thought um, we'd try to update it. So I found this report by IDC um, in a little bit later, and they were talking about in 2013 there were 4.4 zettabytes. So remember in 2011 they said 1.8, then they said there would be uh, double the next year, every few years. So it didn't quite work out that way, but 4.4 zettabytes in 2013 and they're estimating that there's going to be 44 zettabytes in 2020. Uh, this is a nice little slide. They produce this every year, I think, so you could have a look at it. This is from uh, 2017. Uh, it's from Data Never Sleeps, Domo, and it's trying to give you an idea of, of the size of the data. So every minute of the day, there were um, 3 million, 3.6 million Google conducts, uh, Google searches. Uh, there were 600 um, new pages on Wikipedia. There was uh, 120 more academics, uh, professionals on LinkedIn, and there were four million, more than four million watches of, of YouTube videos. So you can see this is huge numbers of of of, of, of accesses. Um, this is another slide from that same report, and this was just talking about the world internet population, and it was saying that um, the size that it's grown over several years. And you can see it, there's huge numbers of people coming on, they're producing huge amounts of data, we've got a large amount of data. So when we talk about big data, they usually have some kind of um, definition like this. So they talk about large volumes of high-velocity complex and variable data, and it's going to require advanced techniques and technologies to capture the data, store it, to distribute it, to management, manage it, and to, and to analyze it. So the real challenge is making sense of this data, and the opportunity for businesses is being able to exploit it to make better decisions. And if you look at big data for even a couple of minutes, you'll, you'll often see this, the, these Vs. So this one's talking about the three Vs volume of data, velocity of data, and variability of data. So large amounts coming up, coming at us really quickly and of variable types. Um, so, so people used to talk about the three Vs. They often talk about the four Vs as well. So the four Vs is volume, the amount of data, velocity, how much it's being produced, how fast it's being produced, variety, the different kinds of formats, and the fourth V is veracity. So Often that data is very inconsistent or very low quality, um, ambiguous, difficult to work with. There's also a five Vs, but I'll let you find that one out yourself. The last thing I want to talk about, this is a slide that we're going to see a little bit later in the, se in the semester. It's really just looking at the different kinds of data. And we can divide our data into two main types, structured data. So that's essentially what you would see if you had an Excel spreadsheet. So you have rows of data. And for each row of data, there's the same number of columns, essentially a spreadsheet. And uh, then there's unstructured data. Unstructured data is generally human-generated data. So it's things like text or multimedia or video or audio or, or graphical. And um, we're really good at dealing with the structured data. 
it's more difficult to deal with the unstructured data. But unfortunately, the unstructured data is really the norm out there. Only about 15% of the data that we see is structured. Most of it's unstructured. Okay, well, I'll see you in the next lecture.